Salve to the Talon family. We hope everyone doing well. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zachwan. This is your brother Kasafo. We have another exciting lesson for you guys today. Men Building the House in Faith, a, a part of the Men series. We hope everybody's been able to catch, uh, to catch the lessons and to follow along. And it's been helpful for the growth of your families, for the growth of the men, for the growth of the women, for the growth of the children. Uh, we definitely are heading on to the women coming up shortly. I think this is lesson five, and I think we have one more lesson for the men. And then we're going yeah, transition. And then we're transitioning to the to our wonderful sisters, daughters of Zion. So Ahaya be gracious and allow all things just to be fulfilled and to prosper in his in his name. And may he prosper the works of our hands. Um Brother Cosmo, you got anything? Uh, yes. Um if you like the um PDF notes for the lesson, just email us please. <laughs> All right. Praise Ahaya. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right. For the men in building ourselves and our households, we are exhorted to walk in the fear of Allah. Can you read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, and then verse 3 to 7, please? All right. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Him. Proverbs chapter three verse three. Let not mer excuse me, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the Amen. table of thine heart. Amen. Mercy and truth. These are the things we are not to forsake. Continue, please. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of Elohim and men. Continue, please, bro. Trust in the higher with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. Amen. Continue. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So do everything in the fear of Allah. Do everything in everything we do. Make sure it's according to his ways and his will. Continue, please. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear Ahaya and depart from evil. It's very important for us to depart from our own mindset or our own thinking to walk in the fear of Allah. And all things that we do in word and deed ought to be done in the name of Lord Yache, giving thanks unto Ahaya, our Allah. Can you read Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, please? And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Adonai Yache, giving thanks to Allah and the Father by him. This wisdom is the key to building a sure house upon the rock, which is Yache. Can you read Sirach, chapter 27, verse 3, please? Unless a man holds himself diligently in the fear of Ahaya, his house shall soon be overthrown. So this is, we're going, this lesson is about knowing what we need to do to ensure that our houses stand in the faith. And can you read Sirach chapter 35, 36, verse 5, please? To ah, Sirach chapter 36, verse 25, sorry. Oh, no problem. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. When we have no hedge about us, the hedge is referring to Allah angels around us, his mercy being with us. The possession, speaking of for the men, our possession, our household, our works, our family will be spoiled. Yet, we have admonition in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3, please. Through wisdom, it's in house built, and by understanding, it is established. Amen. We need these Holy Spirits with us to establish our house and build it up. And in order to receive wisdom, the mother of all things, what, what, so what must we do? Sirach chapter 1, verse 26, please. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Amen. It is not well 
for a man to be hasty in speech, to say he would do something, when, when the time comes to actually do it, he's slack or negligent to fulfill his word. If he says he would do something, it must be done, so that he does not bear false witness against himself and set a bad example for his household. Can you read Sirach chapter 4, verse 29, please? Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack and remiss. Amen. And also it's important not to be an intemperate person in our households. Can you read Sirach chapter 4, verse 30, please? Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. Amen. And this is important because we ought not to be ferocious as lion, but gentle as the servants of Allah. I am speaking peaceably and doing all things in temperance so that everyone in the house may have an example and this is important for us because can you read Sirach chapter 10 verse 21 please the fear of the Lord goeth before the oblation of authority but roughness and pride is the losing thereof you want you want to run that one again can you read that one more time please sure the fear of the Lord goeth before the oblation the op Obtaining, excuse me, the fear of the Lord go up before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. This is important for us because in our households, if we walk in the fear, that authority would be given unto us of the Lord. But if we walk in as a lion and frantic, being rough and prideful, we'll lose our household's respect. And we run the danger of losing our households altogether. In the Gospel of Thomas, Yache told of how blessed would be the man that would overcome the lion within him to become a new man, which is having Yache formed in him. Can you read Gospel of Thomas 9, please? Yache said, Blessed is the lion which becomes man when consumed by man. And cursed is the man whom the lion consumes. And the lion becomes man. Man. The lion, speaking of, we know the devil goes about as a roaring lion. And the man is Christ Yahweh. So it's well for us to have the man, which is Christ our Lord, consume the lion that's warring within us, rather than to be consumed by the lion and be cursed with him. It's also... Not well for a man to be angry, tempered, moody, depressed, emotional, or riotous in his house as a lion. A hasty, quick-tempered spirit will cause a man to err often. Rather, a man must exemplify righteousness in his house so that his flock may follow. As we read in Sirach 4 and 30, that we ought to be not as a lion in our houses, nor frantic among our servants. The word frantic means to emotionally out of control. Marked by fast and nervous, disordered and anxiety-driven activity. This is what we have to avoid in our family. Can you read Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9, please? Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Knowing that anger is a foolish thing, we ought to be abstaining from it and not hasty to jump into it. Can you read Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22, please? An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. All right. And Hermas' is help is going to help us understand how a furious man would abound in transgression. Mandate 5 of the Shepherd of Hermas, chapter 2, verse 2, 4, 6, and and then two and four, and then six through eight, please. All right. Just in case anyone's new watching, please, um, our link to our website is below. You can get the Shepherd of Hermits, one of the Hebrew records, so you can follow along. Uh, the Shepherd of Hermits, Mandate 5, Chapter 2, Verse 2. For when it seeth such men in prosperity, it, insinu it insinuates itself into the heart of the man. 
and for no cause whatever, the man or the woman is embittered on account of worldly matters, either about meats or some triviality, or about some friend, or about giving or receiving, or about follies of this kind. For all these things are foolish and vain and senseless and inexpedient for the servants of Elohim. That's how the spirit of angry temper insinuates itself into the heart of a man. Continue, please, to verse 4, please. But angry temper is in the first place foolish, fickle, and senseless. Then from foolishness is it engendered bitterness, and from bitterness wrath, and from wrath anger, and from anger spite. Then spite being in comp excuse me, then spite being composed of all these evil elements becometh a great sin and incurable. Amen. So that helps us get understand of how anger leads us onto a worse thing to lead us unto our death. And notice it said it's in the angry temper is in the first place foolish. So you know, and this ties right back into what we read in Proverbs, that angry anger is rest in the bosom of fools. So let us not be fools, but be wise in Christ to have saved from it. Continue, please, on to verse 6, so we can get understanding what's going on with the Spirit, because the Spirit, you know, this Holy Spirit, it isn't pleased with angry temper. Let's see how she reacts to it, please. The del six. Okay. The sorry, delicate. I apologize. No, you're okay. Oh, sorry the, again. <laughs> the delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, departeth from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. This is why we are, we need that wisdom to build our house and that understanding for it to be established. This is why we have to walk in gentleness and tranquility so that the Spirit may be with us to do things well. Continue, please. Then, when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, that man becometh emptied of the righteous spirit. And henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions being dragged about hither and thither by evil spirits, and is altogether blinded and bereaved of his good intent. Thus then it happeneth to all persons of angry temper. Hopefully this helps understand why, if we had experiences where everything we're doing, things aren't coming together, we can't get tasks complete, we have good intentions, but things fall apart. It's from the evil spirits working in us and the righteous spirit having left us being given to angry temper. So may we be diligent in this. And we are exhorted in verse 8, please. Refrain, therefore, from angry temper, the most evil of evil spirits. But clothe thyself in long suffering, and resist angry temper and bitterness, and thou shalt be round in company with the holiness which is beloved of Ahia. Amen. Amen. Did you notice, brothers? and sisters watching, that he said, resist angry temper and bitterness. This is important because angry temper isn't merely just getting angry in a violent way, but right. also bitterness is a work of angry temper. Being grieved or, or getting in one's feelings or being offended or bearing a grudge or being resenting someone for something or being unable to forgive. These are the works of angry temper. So. Oh, may we understand it's more than just being angry in a violent way, but it's also getting into feelings. That's so why we have to be gentle and tranquil. Tranquility is to be at peace, to be even keel, right? And this is important for us so that we can be round in company with the holiness, which is beloved of Ahaya, our Allahaya. And the wisdom of Solomon tells of this, how this is helpful for us. Can we read Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, please? He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. That's interesting because a mighty man, he's strong in his flesh. And a man that can take a city is powerful in, in deeds of the flesh, physicality. But a man that is slow to anger 
the righteous spirit is mighty in him. This is why he is better. And to be able to rule his spirit, that's being more diligent, having the spirit of Christ working in him to control himself and stay in tranquility. This is why such a man is better than those that are strong on the outside. Also, we have to be mindful of anger and hastiness, like being as a lion and such, because these are the works of Satan. Can you read the Testament of Gad, chapter 4, verse 7, please? For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan, through, hate, through hastiness of spirit and all things to men's death. Notice, brothers, that's why we have to avoid hastiness, because that's what Satan uses to inspire the spirit of hatred for his words. This is why being even keel and temperate and slow to react and make sure we're doing the right thing is important for us to avoid, avoid leading to our death. Excuse me. Continue, please, brother. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of Elohim and long suffering unto the salvation of men. Amen. It work, the spirit of love works together with the law of Allah. And we have to have both. They don't go without one another. If we are to love our family, we have to walk in the law with long suffering to lead to our salvation and the salvation of our house because our wives are our bone and our flesh. These are our bodies. So getting ourselves saved by loving the law, it would also save our family. And now read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 29, please. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. Because he understands the greater power that is in the fruits of the Spirit and what it's actually doing for his household. It's saving it. That's why he has great understanding to be slow to wrath. Continue, please. But he that is hasty of spirit exalted folly. Exalted folly because anger is foolish and the hastiness of spirit exalted the spirit of hatred working with Satan. All right, continue please in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. I apologize. The discretion of a man defers his anger. And it is his glory to pass over a transgression. This is important because it will keep us from being bitter at our wives during their journey in the faith. Can you read Hermas, Mandate 5, verse, chapter 2, verse 3, please? But long suffering is great and strong. And as a mighty and vigorous power, and its prosperous and great enlargement, gladsome, exultant, free from care, glorifying Ahia at every season, having no bitterness in itself, remaining always gentle and tranquil. This long suffering therefore dwelleth with those faith excuse me, this long suffering therefore dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. Amen. This is the faith we ought to walk in. Can you read Colossians chapter 3, verse 19, please? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Hopefully we understand that avoiding that bitterness is a part of the bigger picture of avoiding hastiness and angry temper altogether. Walking in that patience as the wife grows. You, your wife is the weaker vessel. So she may have more of a struggle to attain unto righteousness. So one must be very patient, long-suffering, and merciful as Yache is with the church as he builds us into a perfect house. Can you read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, please? Likewise, ye husbands, the well with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the wicked vessel, and that being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Remember, you all are heirs together because she is your bone and flesh. To avoid, so that'll help you avoid getting grieved with her so that the hatred doesn't spring up in your heart. Ephesians 5 and 29, please. 
For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherish, cherish excuse me, and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. Also forbear threatening, and be perfect by well doing in the sight of Ahia, regardless of one's wife's behavior. Ephesians six and nine, please. And ye masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing threatening. Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither are there respect the persons with him. That's right. Sirach chapter 9, verse 1. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom, and teach her not an evil lesson against thyself. Amen. Don't render evil for evil in your household. Amen. Sirach chapter 10, verse 6, please. Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong. And do nothing at all by injurious practices. Nothing at all. Don't do anything out of spite or to cause harm or to get back at one's, um, fam one's spouse. And we cannot bear hatred for the wrongs that are done. We ought to have long be forbearing, forgiven as Christ forgave us. And let not this thought enter our hearts. In Proverbs 20, 20 verse 22, please. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Amen. Wait on Ahia's deliverance. Don't get, don't react to what's being done, but get, have that patience until Ahia bring her to the place of being fruitful in the fruits of the Spirit. Can you read Proverbs, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 12, verse 17, please? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Amen. And also, with not rendering evil for evil, we also ought to do what in First Peter chapter 3, verse 9, please. Not render evil for evil or railing for railing. Your wife may be fiery. She may be a yellow. She may mock you or be a scorner or accost you. But, we are to respond as follows. Continue, please. But contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Verse ten of First Peter three. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Amen. We know that we are seeking good days and love the life in Christ. Therefore, we have to guard our tongue. As you all know, brothers, we've been talking about guarding our tongue pretty consistently because it's very important for us. Romans chapter 12, verse 20, please. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in, doing, for, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Therefore, sometimes, sadly, Un unknowingly, your wife may act as your enemy, yet continue to do well unto her, so that the heap of coals may help turn her unto the faith of Christ Yache. So we ought to do good as she does what she wills, providing all things honestly to turn her unto the faith of Christ and repentance. Romans 12 and 21, please. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Love overcomes all. Do not take matters into our own hands, because Ahia is the judge. Let him deal with the heart of the spouse and circumcise their heart. Prayer, deeds of righteousness with the fruits, and the righteous discourse daily are most powerful tools to turn the heart. Can you read Shepherd of Hermas, Vision 2, chapter 3, verse 1, please? But do thou, Hermas, no longer bear grudge against thy children. Neither suffer thy sister to have her way, so that they may be purified from their former sins. You may have grown emotional or just let your wife do whatever she wants to avoid confrontation or avoid getting angry or bitter yourself. But this is not helpful for her soul or yours. Continue, please. For they shall be chastised with the righteous chastisement, unless thou bear a grudge against them thyself. The bearing of a grudge worketh death. 
So we see being unable to speak peacefully to deter your wife from having her own way is a sign of bearing a grudge. In love, you still have to speak the truth gently because a rebuke with love is better than a thousand rebukes. In order to do so, you have to pray Yahweh deliver you from the works of the flesh within so you can be delivered from that grudge and be, and be able to speak peaceably from the heart. Continue in that same verse, please. The rest of verse one. But thou, Hermes, hast had great tribulations of thine own by reason of the transgressions of thy family, because thou hadst no care for them, for thou wast neglectful of them, and wast mixed up with thine evil transactions. Interesting, you notice that the afflictions, the tribulations that Hermes was going through was because of his family's transgression, but it was also because he had no care for them. So we as men have to take responsibility, seeing that the condition of our household is due to what our lack of care for it. Therefore, we are to not be neglectful anymore and put more focus on our family than making money or doing our own thing. And Ahaya's mercy can strengthen us to work righteousness in our households that it may be saved. Shepherd of Hermas, vision one, chapter three, verse two, please. But the great mercy of Ahia had pity on thee and thy family, and will strengthen thee and establish thee in its glory. Only be not thou careless, but take courage and strengthen thy family. So that, to, that's his, I'm sorry, I man. apologize. That part was essential in not being careless. We, is, we have to not be careless to, and take courage to do the right thing, to walk in the law, to walk in love, and strengthen our family with words of righteousness and setting an example for it. This, as the scripture said in what is it, Peter chapter 3, about being, not being lords over the, the Allahim's heritage, but being examples to the flock. We have to take strength to, and not be careless, but be diligent to ensure that we're doing the right thing so that the house may have the light of Christ to look unto. All right, continue, please, brother. For as the smith hammering his work conquers the task which he wills, so also do a righteous discourse repeated daily conquer all evil. Amen. Continue, please. Cease not, therefore, to reprove thy children. For I know that if they shall repent with all their heart. They shall be written in the books of life with the saints. Amen. So with your children, you have to speak righteous, righteously daily, reproving them in wisdom. And with your wife, you do not let her have her own way by speaking to her in meekness in the right of the right way. But that doesn't mean become controlling because she has to choose to do right for herself. It's a process of beseeching and entreating her to do the right thing while standing up and doing the right thing yourself. All right. Can you read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, please? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. We see what Christ Yache did. He came and sacrificed himself for the church so that it may be cleansed. We also have to sacrifice ourselves to become a new creature in Christ through the fruits of the Spirit to save our households. And that love he had for us is the love we have to have for our house. Can you read John 13 and 34, please? A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. Hopefully that helps understand why he said, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friends. So may we lay down our lives for our families. A wife is a man's portion in this life. He is commanded to enjoy her and be ravished within her love. Ensure to have her know she is loved as your own flesh with affection, as well as teach her righteousness by your walk firstly and then your kind words that you may present her without spot and blameless unto Yache. Can you read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9, please? Live joyfully with thy wife, whom thou lovest, all the days of thy life, 
of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Keep your body sound, abstaining from youthful lusts until Ahaya give you a wife, so that you don't give your strength, which is your seed, unto an unbelieving woman, who is a stranger from the race of the children of Abraham by faith. Can you read Sirach chapter 26, verse 19, please? My son, keep the flower of thy age sound, and give not thy strength to strangers. Let not the beauty of a woman cause you to fall from the patience of the Lord in waiting for a wife. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30, please. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth for hire, she shall be praised. Amen. And Sirach 9 and 8, please. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman, for herewith love is kindled as a fire. A lot of bad relationships have come from just being infatuated with a woman's beauty without taking into account who she is as a person. Sirach 25 and 21, please. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. We, it is not well to take, a, to take wives for pleasure's sake. The righteous give an example of how one ought to marry. Can you read Tobit chapter 8, verse 7, please? And now, O Lord, I take this my sister, excuse me, and now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but uprightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. Man, you see, it's not for lust, but uprightly. <laughs> Knowing that we don't take wives for lust's sake, but uprightly, we ought to do what Reuben said in Testament of Reuben chapter 4, verse 1, please. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women, nor set your mind on their affairs, but walk in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahia. But walk in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahia, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until Ahiah give you a wife whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. Men are appointed wives, hence we are to wait for a wife from Ahiah's will. Can you read, do we have an example in Tobit to see how that is true? Tobit chapter 6, verse 17, please. And the devil said, I, I guess, I'm sorry, I should have gave the, the back story of it. In okay. the story of Tobit, there was a woman. She had been espoused to seven men, and they all died by evil spirit before they, they could touch her. And hopefully this can tie it in today where people have been in a lot of bad relationships and things go wrong because this was not the relationship that was appointed by Allah Hayyam. And here we have an example of how this man came along and Allah Hayyam delivered the woman from the evil spirit because she was appointed for this man from the beginning. All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Tobit chapter 6, verse 17. And the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again anymore. You want to give a little backstory on this so they understand what we're reading? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this demon Asmodeus. You can find him in the Testament of Solomon. He had been, he had fell in love with the woman and the demon, any man that would come near her, he would kill the man. But notice the demon wouldn't be able to come anymore because there was an angel with Tobit that gave him the remedy to cause the demon to go away. And remember, we talked about how the husband is a savior of the body. Tobit was the one that was appointed for her. So that authority was for him to do, to deliver her from the evil, to help understand how when things are done according to Ahaya's will, the demons have to depart. Um, hopefully that helps give a little backstory on it. And the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again anymore. But when thou shalt come to her, rise up both of you and pray to Elohim, which is merciful, 
who will have pity on you and save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto thee from the beginning. Notice how the power of prayer, because husband and wife delivered. And notice that he said, she was appointed unto thee, she is appointed unto thee from the beginning, and thou shalt preserve her. Because the husband is the savior of the body, as the book of Ephesians speaks of. So husbands, we have a responsibility for our families. And it's important to wait for a wife because there's one, according to Ahaya's will, appointed for a man, if Ahaya so wills a man to be married. Continue, please. And thou shalt preserve her, and she shall go with thee. Moreover, I suppose that she shall bear thee children. Now when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her, and his heart was effectually joined to her. Notice, he loved her for righteousness. He had never even seen the woman when he heard these things. All right? To understand, now, touching back on strange women, not giving our, our seed, not giving our strength unto strangers. We have to get understanding of who a stranger is in truth. Sirach chapter 26, verse 19, please. My son, keep the flower of thine age sound and give not thy strength to strangers. All right. Testament of Levi, chapter 9, verse 10, please. Take therefore to thyself a wife without blemish or pollution, while yet thou art young, and not of the race of strange nations. Now, interestingly, Isaac told Levi, don't take a wife of strange nations. Levi's wife was not an Israelite. To help understand that strange nations was referring to unbelievers. And through faith in Allah and here in our times, in faith in Christ our Lord, we brothers and sisters of all nations, our family, through faith in Christ, to be children of Abraham by faith. We have firstly for the Israelites who are truly children of Abraham by faith. When we read Galatians 3 and 7, please. Know ye therefore that, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So those Jews who believe our children, the flesh profits us nothing if we don't believe. As a believer, taking an, taking an unbelieving Israelite, would be taking a wife of a strange nation since she is not a child of Abraham by faith. That's why Romans chapter 6 tells what it says um, in regards to not all Israel is actually of Israel. We, the true Israelites, are the Israelites in spirit and truth because Allah seeketh those that worship him in spirit and truth. Now, pertaining to the brethren of the Gentiles, can you read Galatians chapter 3? Verse 8 and 9, please. Uh, just so everybody knows the reference you were talking about, not all Israel is of Israel. It's Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Thank you. I thought I said that. You uh, said, said chapter 6. Ah, oh, man, my speech is all off today. I'm sorry. It's all right. Just so they have the reference. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You want Galatians 3 and 8? 3, 8, and 9, please. All right. In the scripture, in the scripture, for seeing that Allah would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faith for Abraham. So we see the Gentiles that believe are blessed with faithful Abraham as well. Jump to verse 13 and 14, please. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. All right. Continue, please. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Yahweh Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. All right. Can you jump to verse 26 and 27, please? And I'm sorry, 20, chap, jump to verse 26 through 29, please. Okay. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. For ye are all the children of Allah by faith in Christ, Yahweh. Now Jew and Gentile are children of Allah by faith through Christ, Yahweh. Continue, please. 
For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Yahweh. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And there we see the Gentiles in faith are also the seed of Abraham, which are not strange nations. And believing brothers and sisters may make marriages together because they come from the one family of our fathers. Yache came to reconcile the house of the father, Ahaya, and make us all one according to the spirit. Hence, we are all brethren and sisters through him. Can you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 15, please? All right. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcised, excuse me, who were called uncir uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without Elohim in the world. But now in Christ Yahweh, Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. But now the Gentiles are near. Continue, please. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Jew and Gentile are one family in Yahweh. Continue, please. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of co commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Through that peace, can we jump to verse 18 and 19 of Ephesians chapter 2, please? For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim. Believing Gentiles are not strangers, they're saints, brothers and sisters of the household of Elohim. Now we understand in truth we are all his children by Yahweh, and no man is common or unclean. Peter was shown that men and women of Israel, excluding the sons of Aaron unless in specific cases, could indeed marry believing Gentiles that were no longer called common or unclean, for they became the children of faithful Abraham in spirit, being sanctified by Yahweh. Can you read Acts of Thomas? I'm sorry, <laughs> Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 10, verse 28, please. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Ye know how that it was an unlawful, excuse me, and he said unto them, Ye know how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Elohim hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That way he said to keep company, that Greek word helps understand it, also referred to make marriages. In G2853, the Thea definition, can you read that please, the Thea and the Strongs? Yes, it says to glue, to glue together, cement, or fasten together. To join or fasten firmly together, to join to oneself to or cleave to. Right. The, the Strongs definition is to glue to stick, cleave, join, or join self, or keep company. This was letting us know that no longer are we to consider the brothers of the nations that believe as uncommon or unclean. And, for, and Peter goes on to say in Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. Can, can I touch on something before we go on from there? Absolutely, please. Uh, just in case anyone thinks that what Peter was talking about when he said keep company was not talking about marriage, uh, when you go into the Hebrew word for cleave, um, seeing that we have in the in the in G twenty eight fifty three for to keep company, the word uh, actually means to to stick, to glue, to cleave, to join self. When you actually go to the word cleave in H sixteen ninety two. The word for cleave, when he was talking to Abraham and, and Sarah, for them to come together uh, in marriage, it says 
to properly to impinge, that is, cling or adhere, figurative, figur, excuse me, figuratively to catch by pursuit, abide to fast, to cleave or fast together, follow close, hard after, be joined or joined together, to keep or fast or keep fast, overtake, pursue hard, to stick or to take. And these are the same words that it is when it says to keep company, when it says to cleave, to stick, to join, keep company, to glue. So these the words in itself mean the same thing as when when Abraham and Sarah were marrying one another. And I also want to touch on it says or come unto or come unto one of another nation, just so people can understand that. Peter was saying two totally different things. He was actually one thing he was talking about marriage, and the other he was talking about about just generally being around someone. Um, what is the? Let me get the definition for that. Um, that is, well, the Acts ten and twenty eight. Yes, sir. Um, the word for or common to one of another nation. The word come unto means to approach. That is literally come near, visit, or worship, to ascend to. As soon as he come unto, come thereunto, consent, draw near, or go. So that meant just to hang around, or to go worship together, or to just to be around one another. So you can see the difference in the two wordings that Peter was actually speaking. One was talking about marriage, and one was talking about just generally being around one another, so everyone can understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise the higher. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, please. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that Allah is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and work of righteousness is accepted with him. Amen. He that fareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Strange nations are women who are not of the faith of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Can you read Tobit chapter 4, verse 12, please? Beware of our whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. And take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of thy father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers from the beginning, even that day, all married wives of their own kindred, and were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. Amen. Notice he, 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 notice he said that take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. And we know that promised seed was Christ Yache. This helps show that the understanding of that believer that had the spirit of Christ in them was who we ought to marry was from of old. You have Noah, he took Enoch's daughter for a wife. Abraham took Sarah, a Chaldean, as himself and a believer in Allah Hayyam. And he also married Hagar, an Egyptian who believed. When you read Joshua chapter 16, verse 24 and 25, before he married Hagar, she was actually a righteous woman walking in all the same ways as Sarah. And then he also married Keturah, the Canaanite woman, from his household servants. When you read Joshua chapter 25, verse 1, and Jubilees 19 and 11, to see how Abraham married women that were of the seed of Christ Yache even though they were Gentiles by blood. And Isaac took Rebekah, a righteous woman, though she was not a Hebrew as he was because she was considered a Chaldean, yet she was righteous. Joseph, the son of Jacob, he married a believing Egyptian after converting the whole country. In when you read Jubilees chapter 40, verse 8 to 10. And then you have Moses, he married a believing Midianite woman. In Joshua chapter 78, verse 7 and 8. And to go on for more example, you have Salmon, the patriarch of Yahche according to the flesh, and David. 
he married Rahab, the Canaanite woman of Jericho. So that shows David's lineage as also believing women of other nations. And also Boaz, many of you know the story of Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite woman, but she believed and converted. She said, your Elohim shall be my Elohim and your people my people. And she is the foremother, one of the four parents of David and Yahweh according to the flesh. You had something there? No, I'm listening. I'm agreeing. Okay. And then also the daughters were given in marriage to believers as well. You have a man in name, his name is Shishan. He gave his daughter to Jarha, the Egyptian, his servant for a wife in First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 34 and 35. So to understand that marriages can be made between believers in Christ Yache, regardless of nation. And there's only a particular for the sons of Aaron, which we'll touch on. Can you read Tobit chapter 4, verse 13, please? Sure. Now, therefore, my son, love thy brethren, and despise not in thy heart thy brethren, the sons and daughters of thy people, and in not taking, and, and not taking a wife of them, for in pride is destruction and much trouble. And in lewdness is decay and great want, for lewdness is the mother of famine. So love the brethren of faith, and let not pride keep us from constraining ourselves to wait on Ahaya for a wife to marry a believing woman in the Lord. For example, we have Moses to exemplify this. He was a Levite who married Zipporah the Midianite, who was righteous and he restrained himself from marrying an unrighteous woman until he was given her for a wife. <laughs> Can you read Joshua 78 and 8, please? Yes. And, and Zephora walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, and Leah. And uh, just so everybody knows, Moses actually constrained himself when they were trying to give him the Ethiopian woman for a wife, the Ethiopian queen. Uh, when you look in the book of Jasher, um, and it's also it's also in Jubilees, right? The story. I uh, think your your mic. Oh, I'm going. sorry. Oh, there you sorry. Go. Oh no, that story I believe is only in Jasher because okay. the the Ethiopian woman when she didn't she wasn't a believer, right. so he didn't take her for a wife. That's right. If she would have believed, it would have been a different story. Right. All right. So just now, that as an example, he waited on Elohim not to take an unbelieving woman to wife. Amen. Amen. And we had went over before with Judah how he had his he had now into Judah is a good example too of the right and wrong because initially he had taken a Canaanite woman of his own will and she was an unbeliever and he had no pleasure in his children. All right. But then. Tamar, she wasn't an Israelite. She was actually a Persian. She was from the children of Elam, but she was a righteous woman, and we see what became of his children after that. Well, this is the root of where our Lord came from. So hopefully that helps understand. Now, for the sons of Israel, only the sons of Aaron are restricted to marrying believing maidens of Israel. The sons of Aaron cannot marry a non-Israelite on while the rest of the Israelites and Levites are not restricted from marrying believing women of any nation. Can you read Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 22, please? Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had a priest before. So, they, they have to take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel. So that lets you know she has to be a believer. She has to be of the seed of the house of Israel and or a widow that had a priest before. The sons of Aaron may not, make, may not marry the women of other nations for any reason. They may only marry the, the maidens of the seed of the house of Israel or an Israelite who is a widow of a former priest. Now, for all believers, Hebrew or Gentile, for those that are already married, the admonitions are as follows. 
because we went over all that stuff. This about you're not married and going into getting married. Okay. This is for those who are already married. So to make sure we cover all things. Can you read first Corinthians chapter seven, verse 10 and 11, please. And unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Amen. That's That right there was for two believers in a relationship. Yes. Okay. Can you read that again, please, just so we have that clear? First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. And you can read the book of Hermas, Mandate 4, for more understanding of what Paul is talking about here. All right? We'll leave that for you at your leisure. Now, for those believers in marriages wherein a spouse is not a believer, Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12 to 15, please. Shall right. 12 to 16, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. But to, the rest I, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And a woman with half a husband that believeth not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Amen. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but Allah hath called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Now, we just want to read through it, and then we're going to get back into it, of course. Where it says, if the husband or wife be pleased to dwell with you, this is where they're not hindering you from doing what you have to do in the faith. The, the, and of course, if we're walking in the faith, we're peaceable with all men. So there's not, we're not causing them any harm, though they may not be in agreement with what, with everything we we believe. Yet they're not hindering us from doing what we desire to do in the faith. They're pleased to dwell with us. There's no issue there, and we that's where we continue in that relationship. So there's no need to separate from that person. And of course, as he said at the end, how knowest thou whether thou shalt save thy wife or save thy husband? We don't know if our behavior in setting that righteous example would eventually convert our spouse onto the faith. That's important for us to keep in mind. Just because we come into the faith of Christ doesn't mean we separate from the person we're already in a relationship with. Right. All right. We come as we are, and we hope I higher turn their heart to believe, right? And we continue going forward in the faith in hopes that the Lord bring them along. That's right. All right? And for those of you with children in those marriages, it's important to continue in the faith because now you know that your children are sanctified through your faith in Christ, Yache, though your spouse may not believe, all right? So you're doing this for your family, men and women. What you're doing in the faith of Christ is for the betterment of your family. All right. All right. Did you have anything in that section, Zach? Well, we get to go. I think it was very, very clear. Okay. Cool. I don't have to add the pause writing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a blessing to get a wife, for she is the beginning of building your home. Can you read Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, please? Whoso findeth the wife findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of Ahia. 
because he was the one that gave her. Chapter 30, Sirach, chapter 36, verse 24, please. He that getteth a wife be beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. This is why it is good to wait until Ahaya give a wife, because she will be a help to you, since Ahaya knows what you have need of, and she will be a comfort to you. And in that having her as the beginning of your possession, that's the way you start your household has begun. We are exhorted in Sirach chapter 26, verse 20, concerning a possession. When thou hast gotten a fruitful possession through all the field, so it was thy own seed, trusting in the goodness of thy stock. Now so, that parable, that parabolic speech is speaking of that fruitful possession in a whole field of all the women in the world. You have gotten that fruitful possession, that wife that I am appointed for you. Sow it with your own seed. Have children with her, trusting in the goodness of your stock. Because we as believers, we come from the stock of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all believers of all nations, that stock of the spirit of Christ in us, trusting that our children will have that spirit in them as well. All right? One moment. All right. Continue, please. So thy race, which thou leavest, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. So you're le you knowing that you're, you have a fruitful possession, she is abounding in the fruits of the spirit, and you have the faith of Christ Yache, that's leaving behind a race that will be magnified in Christ Yache, having the confidence of their good descent, being of the children of being of the children of Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. Continue in Proverbs chapter five, verse eighteen, please. Let, let thy fountain be blessed. That's your children, <laughs> the fountain. That's what comes forth from you. Continue, please. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. All right, verse 19. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. Our forefathers had great love for their wives and took the utmost care of them. And speaking to them with endearing words, with examples as these. Jasher 23, verse 7, please. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to Adonai our Elohim, that he may do good with us. Jash, Jubilees 27, verse 14. Let's see how Isaac spoke to his wife. And Isaac said to Rebekah, my sister, Weep not on account of Jacob, my son, for he goes in peace, and in peace will he return. All right, and let's see how the love song between Solomon and his wife, which was in spirit, Yache, to the church. So Songs of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 19, please. <laughs> how fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse? How much better is thy love than wine, and the smells of thy ointments than all spices? All right, verse 1 and 9 of Songs of Solomon. I have compared thee, O my love, to a company of horses in Pharaoh's chariots. All right, in verse 1 and 16. Behold, in chapter 1, verse 16, sorry. Behold, thou art fair, my beloved. Yea, pleasant, also our bed is green. So we have, we see in damn words, my sister, my daughter, my spouse, my love, my beloved. These are endearing words to use with our spouses. One moment, please. All right. The love one has to have for one's wife is parallel to the love Yache has for the church. Ephesians 5 and 25, please. Husbands. Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man 
never yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. She needs the man to be an example for her, to help her see the light of Christ Yache, in him to be converted in her heart. This is why it's important for men to teach themselves first to walk according to the commandments of Ahaya, and then they can adequately teach their wives. The epistle of Polycarp to the Philippians, chapter 2, verse 6, please. And teach ourselves first to walk according to the commandments of Ahaya, and then your wives to walk likewise according to the faith that is given to them, in charity and in purity, loving their own husbands with all sincerity, and all others alike with all temperance, and to bring up their children in the instruction and fear of Ahaya. So starting with ourselves, brothers, this is going to help bring our household together in the fruits of the Spirit. And being in agreement with our wife is beautiful in the sight of the Spirit. In Sirach chapter 25, verse 1, please. In three things I was beautified, and stood up beautiful both before Elohim and men, the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So there we see, men, your choice and labor to work righteousness will have an effect on what spirit your children walk in, in their generations. Sirach chapter 4, verse 16, and chapter 14, verse 26, please. Sirach chapter 4, verse 16. If a man commit himself unto her, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her. And his generation shall hold her in possession. So if we commit ourselves unto the Holy Spirit, and then we shall inherit her, and they would also be with our generations. They shall hold her in possession. Our children will have the Holy Spirit as well. And verse chapter 14, verse 26, please. He shall set his children under her shelter, and shall lodge under her branches. So there we see it affects our children as well. What we do, it not only affects our wives, it also affects our children. So with that, hopefully we men have an understanding of how we are to build our households in the faith and how our choices and our, our actions and our belief in Christ Yache does have an effect on our family and can cause it to come to the light of Christ. And that's the end of it. All right. We pray, All right. we pray everybody enjoyed the lesson. It was edifying. Uh, the lessons are powerful. We hope everybody definitely checking them out. And please check out the other lessons. There's so many lessons to look to look through, to to follow, to to watch. Um, please check out the men series for all our brothers out there, and helping your families and build them up structurally in the Word and in deed. Um, we just truly are thankful. We hope everybody is enjoying these lessons as much as we are. And I, Allah, I am be with you all. Brother Gospel, you got anything? Peace. I apologize for being a bit under the weather today. It's cold out here. <laughs> all right, it's good, man. <laughs> man I am comfort us all. all right, we hope it, I keep you all throughout all things that's going on in the world, all the things that you have going on within yourself constantly fighting the battle each and every day. We pray for you. We hope Elohim keeps you uh, and may strengthen you. And may we all be comforted and grow in the fruits of the Spirit and getting away from the works of the flesh so that we can be true disciples and true followers of Christ Yache. All right. Shout out to the Talon family. Shout out.